Hey everyone, Ryan from eBike Escape. In this video, I am continuing my conversation with Kyle from Bolton eBikes. I've been posting several videos over the last few weeks covering a wide variety of topics. In this video, I asked him about some of the popular models that he sees customers purchasing, and we also go pretty in depth on hub drive versus mid drive. So some things you might wanna think about if you're looking at some of these various electric bikes. And of course, if you're new here, please consider subscribing for all sorts of electric bike related content. In the description, you'll find a link to my electric bike accessories list, as well as my electric bike deals page. With that, let's get back to the interview. I would love to hear your perspective since you have everything from uh, like a three wheel electric bike to crazy <laughs> off road, um, you know, super powerful electric bikes. I'm curious uh, to hear your perspective on like, what are people interested in? And I mean, just looking at your website, there's tons of fat tire bikes. Obviously, I don't think that's a trend that's that's going away. Um, but but curious from your perspective, since since you're much closer to this than I am. I mean, I can tell you what the most popular bikes yeah, are sure. for me. Um, you know, the the number one thing people are asking for from Bolton e-bikes is a model called the Blackbird. And it is a 750 watt bike with a rear hub motor. Um, they're on pre-order about $2,200 to give you an idea of price range. Uh, 52 volt, 16 amp hour battery, um, hydraulic brakes, good front suspension fork, good components. And I think the reason that's the most popular bike right now is because there's a lot of people who see advertising from companies like electric xp from hemiway from rad power saunders they see these facebook ads they get targeted and they see these electric bikes and they're like huh yeah these things are pretty cool like maybe i should buy one of these uh and they start researching those and Eventually, they come across some of my videos where I upgrade those bikes, and they're like, oh, like these bikes could be a little bit more powerful or have this or have better brakes, whatever it is, something catches their attention. Um, and the Blackbird is like the bike that I have developed the most from, I guess, my experience on those upgrades from other brands. So if you were to take any one of those bikes I just mentioned and dump a bunch of money into it and upgrade it, which people love to do. And I, I encourage that. I think that's a great hobby. It's a lot of fun. Like if you want to upgrade things, go for it. Um, but I think that's the most popular bike for me because people are seeing here's like the base entry level bikes I can get at a certain price. But if I spend just a little bit more, I can get something that already has all those upgrades I'm looking for on it. Um, so I think that's why the Blackbird in particular is doing doing well. Um, the other popular bike is one for me that we call the Fox Fat, also a fat tire bike, also kind of a mountain bike style geometry, you know, with the big fat tires and everything. The difference is that it has a 1000 watt mid drive motor instead of a hub motor. And that's probably the number one question I get each day is... <laughs> is people comparing those two bikes or just comparing any random two bikes on the internet. They're like, I'm looking at this bike as a mid drive and I'm looking at purchasing this other bike over here that has a hub motor, which one should I get? And aside from that, you know, like I said, the fat tires are popular. Um, bikes that have a good size battery with a lot of range are popular. Um, and, and I think the, then they just get into some of the more confusing questions. So then they're just trying to figure out which one should they get, which is really, I think, more of a personal preference than anything. Um, but, but I guess if I have to sum it up, it's, it's bikes that often have fat tires. They don't have to, um, but they've got a decent amount of power, 750 watts or more, uh, a decent sized battery and some decent brakes. Um, if a bike has those three things, then then I think people are snatching them up. Yeah, and and I should mention kind of 
from what I've seen and in, in comparing your bikes with, with other brands, like I feel like, you know, you, I can tell with your videos, you take very, very care into selecting each of these components and making sure the bikes come in at like a really great price point. I mean, I was just looking at the Blackbird. Right now it's 2200 And I mean, giant battery motor that has plenty of potential if you want to take it off road, you know, the four piston brakes and all those things. Tubeless ready. I mean, you know, you look at some other brands of e-bikes and you just don't see some of those um, specs. Right. So that's, that's one of the things I always like to do is what does every other e-bike not have that it should have? How do we make it happen? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, and unfortunately that means if, if you're pre-ordering a Blackbird and you're getting one, well, guess what? In a year or two, there's going to be something better than the Blackbird. That's right. just, that's how it's going to go. Yeah. You're never going to have the best newest thing. Um, because hopefully I can help push it to the next level of what's better than that. Um, yeah. that's, I just, that's what I guess brings joy to me is just, uh, having fun with it and making them better every single time. Um, and I don't care if it's my bike or somebody else's bike. Yeah. And, and maybe we can tease out the, I know you're probably sick of the question of, of mid drive versus hub drive, but I, I I'm genuinely curious because from my perspective, when people ask me and I mean, it, it helps if you know a person, right? Like how are, how comfortable are they with a regular bike and some of those things, because, you know, with the mid drive, you have to worry about shifting. There's some things that you at least need to be a little bit more aware of from bike component perspective. So I kind of always lean towards people just for the simplicity. If you're just starting, it's not to say that you might want to upgrade to a mid drive um, unless you really want that additional hill climbing capability that, you know, and, and of course, price wise too, because hub drives typically come in less than, than mid drives, uh, generally speaking. Um, curious if you have any comments on that. Uh, I think your answer that you just gave was very good. <laughs> so not, not a lot to add to that. I mean, I think you pretty much hit it on the head. A hub motor is usually less money. So if budget is a big constraint, you're going to find a better deal if you look for a bike that has a hub motor, because it might have better brakes or a bigger battery than a comparable bike that has a mid drive because a mid drive motor, generally speaking, is more expensive. Uh, and there's a multiple list of reasons for why it's more expensive. There's more moving parts, it's more complicated. You have to have a custom frame to fit the motor. But if you just assume most mid drives cost a little bit more money, say a few hundred dollars more, uh, very right about that. And I would agree as well that a hub motor is usually easier to use. So if you are new to e-bikes or maybe you're just somewhat new to bicycles in general and you're just not as comfortable, then I think a hub motor is something that you can get on and ride with very little effort or thought going into it. Uh, if you're comfortable on an e bike or on a bicycle now, though, and you know if you're a mountain biker, you're going up and down hills, you're used to shifting up and down. Like, think about it this way: if your thought process when you come up to a hill is to shift down, yeah. but you don't even think about it, you just do it because you know that's what you're supposed to do. Then a mid drive motor, where you need to do that for the motor, that's going to come very naturally, and it's going to be very easy so a mid drive is not going to be necessarily harder to ride yeah it's just it's just different yeah. but the advantage is like you said you have gears that you can use to your advantage you can get a little more torque out of it and often you can get a higher top speed out of a mid drive as well compared to a similar wattage of a hub motor so more moving parts a little more wear and tear potentially on a mid drive so if you don't mind working on a bike and if you don't mind, you know, the extra experience of shifting through the gears and all that that's going on, uh, mid drives are great, but a hub motor is simpler and a little bit cheaper. And personally, I think both motors are going to be around for a long time. And in fact, I just talked to, there's a new motor company popping up in the United States of all places. <laughs> and 
they're making motors for electric bikes right now. Um, and their motor is good enough that they're actually going to be exporting motors overseas to Asia wow. for U.S. made motors to be installed on bikes that are probably going to be eventually shipped back here. Wow. Um, and I found it very interesting talking to them that here, here they are, brand new company, brand new motor design, very efficient, very useful. Uh, they've got a hub motor first, but they're working on mid-drive motors too. Um, so I think both are going to be around for a long time. It's just more of a personal preference. What are you looking for? What are you more comfortable with? Do you do you worry at all uh, about standardization? And I'm not talking specifically about your bikes, any brand um, who perhaps has a really custom frame that's made to sp- to fit a current motor that maybe in five, 10 years, if you needed to replace it, this is something that I've thought about. I'm curious um, what, what you think about. I assume that with your bikes, I haven't seen one in person, but it's since that space might be a little bit bigger, you have a little bit more flexibility, whereas with something that's truly built into the frame. Yeah, there is definitely a, a reason to think about that because if you have a proprietary motor of some sort mounted on your bike what if that company does go out of business in five years and no one steps up and makes aftermarket parts or has aftermarket support for it it's possible without a lot of expense or time the bike could become obsolete and you have to throw it in the trash more or less right and i hate to say that but i have seen it um Bionics, when they had their first motor-controller combination, the battery and the controller had this special software that had to talk to each other to work. So you couldn't just, if your battery died, you couldn't just put another 48-volt battery on. It had to do this special handshake to know it was not only a 48-volt, but it was a good battery. And and, uh, when they did go out of business, anybody who had one of those bikes was out of luck. You couldn't fix it. Um, and I'd have to go look into that. I feel like somebody was buying up their um, brand name and components and everything was maybe bringing them back. I don't recall if that actually happened or not. Um, But I, for the most part, prefer to stick with standard components. You know, a motor that, you know, is readily available or easy to mount in the frame or replace. Um, And I try and stay away from some of the really weird proprietary stuff. However, on the flip side, I also know that if you're going to really change and improve things for electric bikes going forward, sometimes you have to take some drastic changes. And some of those ideas work and some don't. So basically what I'm saying is I like to stick to the stuff that's easy to fix and repair but i also think we shouldn't let that stifle our innovation going forward um so that's that's a tricky thing is how do you make up something that's brand new and totally different but still serviceable in five or ten years and that's not always easy yeah for sure well thanks for sharing your thoughts on that something i've i've been curious about um i want to talk about a couple more models before we talk about uh bolton labs um, and, and I feel like this kind of uh, lends itself to talking a little bit about the future. And I'm particularly looking at your Warthog uh, models. Um, so I think it's probably worth talking about, you know, belt drive systems, dual batteries. Uh, you know, the, the, the Warthogs are offered in, let's see, three, three different um, variations. So maybe mm-hmm. you can talk about why you decided to, you know, bring offer these these bikes and and maybe talk about because I, f- I feel like those are kind of the bikes that are you know looking more towards the future of of what um things could sure. get added to to e-bikes uh so the owner of Biconit, that's the brand name on the warthog bikes warthog is a nickname that i gave it and thankfully they're happy with it <laughs> <laughs> i was like daniel i'm giving your bikes a, a name because you know, the model numbers are confusing. It just needs sure. a name, and I have an idea for it, and I'm going to run with it. He said, okay. Uh, but Daniel, who's the owner of Biconet, designed the bikes and came up with the the look and the, the logos and the branding and everything. And 
and he sent me some pictures very early on before any of the website or anything was public and just said, hey, what do you think of this bike? Should we put it into production? Do you think it's something you're interested in? You know, how would the U.S. market feel about it? And everything about the bike, like when you first look at it, what's your first impression? It just looks like a beast. I don't know. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> right. It looks it, awesome. It, it looks tough. It looks like utilitarian. It looks maybe like a military thing. It just looks yeah. like tough. And I was like, I love it. It, it looks great. Like that's, that's something that you should have on an e-bike. Like it should look good, right? If it looks ugly, it doesn't matter how cool it is. Nobody's going to want it if it looks ugly, right? Um, but the dual batteries and the way they were integrated into the frame looked really good. Um, the batteries, those are one of those things where there was a little bit of a step forward, slightly different design. Uh, it doesn't use 18650 cells. They're 21700 cells from LG. So, but hey, that's a newer cell format that in the future should lend itself to bigger capacities. So maybe we can fit even bigger batteries on that frame in the future. Um, but uh, it just had everything about it was just, it's tough. You know, the fat tires are basically as big as we can fit on there. Um, and, and the higher end model goes for, of course, the the ultra mid drive from Bafang, um, which is somewhat new. It's been around for a few years. I um, waited a few years to offer it on any bikes I see. I sell just to make sure that all the problems were flushed out, basically. Um, and it's got a, you know, like you said, the belt drive. I feel like belts have been around for at least 10 years now, but they're not mainstream yet. Most people see a belt and they're like, Oh, what is that? Like, how do you change gears? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of questions about it. Um, but I, I think it's a good combination of just, you know, embracing some change moving forward. Um, and also just the bikes look really tough and cool. And, and because uh, it was a friend of mine who introduced me to it. I was like, you know what? I know the quality is going to be good because of where he's having the bikes made and everything. Uh, and I trust that it's going to be a, a very good bike uh, and, you know, well thought out. Um, and hopefully by providing some feedback that I was able to do in the process, you know, the bike, it just turns out to be a winner. I hope that's the case for it. And that's that's why I'm carrying them, because I, I think they will be. Yeah. And I mean, that has to be one of the, like, the largest implementations of dual batteries in a frame. I mean, most dual battery electric bikes, at least that I've seen, you know, you can, you see the battery, right? It's external to the frame. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's some that are like very obvious external, um, you know, going to a bike show a couple of years back. I remember seeing a few brands that had some, some dual battery type setups, not a lot. Um, I think, we might start to see more of that, um, but we'll see. That's that's one of those things where I don't know. Uh, are two batteries gonna be the thing that wins out over time, or are bikes just gonna slowly get a single battery that's bigger? Right. I don't know the answer to that, um, but I I think right now with the capacities we're limited to and everything, you know, two batteries mounted cleanly on a bike somewhere. Uh, is a great option. And I think we're going to have those around for several years at least, for sure. Yeah. I think it's worth just, I'm just on the website, I think it's worth highlighting some of these specs. 160 newton meters of torque, even has a towing rating of 500 <laughs> yeah. pounds, which is rare for an e-bike, but uh, 1,500 watt peak, obviously, you know, hydraulic disc brakes, 203 millimeter rotors and and of course the 30 amp hour uh total battery um 48 volts uh 15 amp hour for each um battery and of course you want a quick charger for that because it's going to take forever if you want to <laughs> charge up those <laughs> yeah, uh, uh those batteries 30 uh 30 amp hours on a standard two amp charger that comes with most e-bikes that's 15 hours to charge your pack up that yeah. would take a long time yeah you could you could go to bed and uh wake up and still might not be charged yet <laughs> <laughs> yeah we don't want that and of course the 4.8 inch tires which is just crazy so very yeah, cool and they're what you what you can't see from the 4.8 inches they're on 100 millimeter wide rims which is one of the wider sizes you can get so uh, 
they they do just look absolutely massive in person. They're they're crazy, but it's awesome. I love it. Mm -hmm.